know this job is killing me. Hmm. Too much stress producing shit. At least if I was producing something of value, the stress would be worth it, but, you know? But this, this is killing me, man. Mm-hmm. Are you listening? Uh, I have something for you. Diazepam. They calm your nerves. They're all yours. I have another bottle at home. But don't take it with alcohol. Well, this is how you express your concern and sympathy for me, Diazepam? Well, they're more effective than sitting around listening to your complaints when there's nothing I or you can do about it. I have to get to the museum. My father's uh, donating that little goy I told you about at 2 o'clock. Are you going to leave me here to drink this alone? Uh, no, I'll finish mine. Mm. I thought you were knocking off early to watch some golf thing on TV. Yeah, the Masters. Yeah, that's it. Call me. The tiger will need this eagle if he's to challenge, and he's got it. A tiger Woods just got an eagle. Is that good or bad? He made that part, huh? Hmm. Why do they call it the Masters? Oh, uh, because uh, in the old days in the South, all the uh, golfers were white and all the caddies were black, and uh, the golfers were called the Masters, and the caddies, well, they would have wanted to call them slaves, but they, you know. Why do those caddies all wear those white overalls? Well, because white uh, overalls indicate ownership. Uh, the golfers basically own the ca caddies, and you know, it's a wonderful old Southern tradition. Mm, one of my girlfriends took up golf. Maybe I should try it. Mm. So I feel like I'm not fulfilling myself. Oh, so, um, what do you want to do? I don't know. I, uh, maybe open up a store. Maybe retail. Mm, so what? Something with class. What about a bookstore? Oh, no, something with class. You know, I mean, look at your girlfriend. She she raises all this money for people with weird diseases. Well, it's not all of opportunity in retail for leprosy. What I'm saying is she does classy things. Now, I'm not a classy girl, but I think I could become a classy girl. Well, so do I. No, you don't. I do. I really do. I, you know, it depends on how you define class. You're a very generous person, and I consider that to be a very classy thing. Yeah, well, I'm talking about the other kind of class. You know, where people look at you and they say, ooh, she's got class. Good luck. And he's got a nice one there. He's just gonna... No, I guess you want to excuse my French fuck. I'm watching the Masters. The lunch prayer meetings all this week have been canceled because the prayer room is being used by the company psychologist for interviews with anyone who might want to take advantage of her services. All are welcome by appointment through me. Elliot, would you like to make an appointment to see the company psychologist? Oh, I don't want to see a psychologist. You might have some workplace issues you might want to discuss with her, or some personal issues that might be affecting your work, like a, a loved one who's just died or is dying, or a pet who's gone blind or has kidney disease or has just died, or you may have been told by your doctor that you have cancer and that you might be dying. The windshield washer container in my car is cracked and leaking. Want to talk about that? Why can't you just be a decent, direct person instead of a creep? The windroom in the trap. And that, my friends, is the swing of the champion. Look at that gorgeous golf swing. I give my right arm to swing a club like that. There is nothing in the world of sport, maybe in the world altogether, that beats the tradition of the Masters. The folks at ExxonMobil and CBS and the whole Masters organization do an incredible job for the game of golf. Nice. <laughs> Man, I love to play a course like that. Have one of those great old Negro caddies on your bag. Yeah. Well, you know, Augusta's got a black member now. Apparently, he's a very bright CEO and a family guy. That's really? Smart. That's good business. That's why most of those members are the richest guys in America. Yep. You've got to uh, have a feel for the changing times. Mm -hmm. The times there are changing, gentlemen. Oh, mm. nice. Golf's a stupid game. And you're a worthless waste of space and an ignorant fuck. And that, as they say, is that. My show is called Shandy in the Morning, and it deals primarily with everyday issues from the tragedy of abortion and how we're murdering our children to recipes to autism, God's punishment or blessing to what the Oscar nominees are wearing. 
And what would you like to talk about today? Is this between us? Of course. Well, I never really did well on intelligence tests, even though I was a premier cheerleader right through 12th grade. And I guess I was very social and got asked out quite a bit. And like a lot of good looking girls ended up hooking up with a lot of the football stars. And I guess also like a lot of those girls ended up putting out a bit too much and might have had sex with two, sometimes three or four of the top football stars after a big game. I have been told that I have a double jointed pelvis. Anyway, back to the intelligence tests. I never really thought I was super smart, and that has carried over into my adult life and also on the show. For instance, I get this feeling when I'm doing an interview about, say, the evils of abortion or like a real complicated recipe that I don't understand what anyone is saying, including myself. You don't understand what? Well, I mean, I understand English since it's my first language. You speak two languages? No, just English. You know, I'm pretty good with word meanings, but these conversations start whirling around and I just get completely lost. But I have a great smile and the camera loves me. So I have to admit, when I see myself on TV, I look pretty great and my numbers are fantastic. <laughs> And so you want to... Oh, be smarter. Do you read? <laughs> of course I read. <laughs> what do you read? Anything. Everything. Hand me that paper. I can read anything on it. I meant, do you read books? Oh my gosh, no. Who has time to read books in this busy, fast-paced electronic universe? You have to fill this out for your dental coverage. And I have a very good temp for you on gone. He? She. She? How about when I interviewed her, she said she was happily married. Ah. Uh, so this is a woman looking for an affair. This is the meaning of happily married? This is the meaning of happily married. When a woman says that, uh, she's putting up a barrier against stronger impulses. Such as the desire to have uh, an affair. Now you're thinking like a heterosexual. Maybe we'll let you into the club. Oh, well, as Groucho said, I would never belong to any club that was having me as a member. Hmm? I was married by a judge. I should have asked for a jury. Hello, I must be going. I'm glad I came, but just the same, I must be going. Sir? It, it, it's a documentary series for public television on Canadians in the media making a difference. And they want to film me discussing a news idea with a coworker. Right. I want to talk about journalistic integrity. D okay. No, Hi, guys. Wait, I, I'm not... Something like this? Are we ready? And when you're ready, Andrew. I would like to do a series on the role of the media in a democracy. What do you think? Me? Oh, uh, I think uh, no, democracy uh, don't, is... Don't, don't talk. I'm a fundamental believer in the democratic process, but democracy with responsibility. And what I mean by that is we don't have a right to vote. Voting is a privilege, which we earn with our behavior. And if we contribute to society, we get that right. But should that right be squandered on the immigrant class or the drug class or the class who doesn't work at all and lives on welfare, which is simply the labor of others? That's a question I want to examine. I'm thinking of doing a story on our military preparedness, which in this modern age means our nuclear capability against a, an all-out Chinese or radical Muslim attack. Sure. What yeah. do you think? Well, I no, think don't, that's... don't say anything. What? No, don't say anything. Just, just uh, smile. Nod. Nod. Give me a... Yeah. That's great. Thanks for the researching that story for me. It's great working with people like yourself, Mohammed. I'm Dwayne, not Mohammed. Uh, well, I, th I think we've got the clip. Um, yeah? yeah? Yeah. And, you know, I think, uh, I think Mohammed plays a little better than Dwayne. Totally. You know, you're, you're a person of color, and I don't want that to change, or, or you to think of changing it. I guess we can start with why you decided to talk to me today. People in the office don't like me. Any idea why? They think I'm a creep. Are you afraid of being open and honest with people in the office? No. I just don't want to because I think they're all idiots. Hmm. And how do they react to that? See you. I think they think I'm an asshole. I think you need to trust your own opinions and be direct and honest with people without worrying about how they see you. 
Why the hell would I do that? By engaging them in an honest and sympathetic way. Can I be honest with you? Sure. I think you're a fool and a profession of fools. Thanks for coming in, Elliot. KJ hits a long... Oh, beautiful shot. KJ Choi, the inscrutable one. KJ Choi. Man is made of the kind of steel they use in samurai swords. No motion, focus. You can't tell what he's thinking. Jesus. It's the Japanese. Afraid to break it to you, but KJ Choi is of the Chinese faith. Choi's a Korean name. Well, the E Man knows. That's right. I'm not the E Man. Your Asian's a completely different breed of player. Yeah, they're taking over the game. Well, I am. You know, you got your black players, your, your Tiger Woods. You guys are the emotional ones, the, the ones who can snap like that. Yeah. You know, the womanizers. They're not family men. Then you got your Asians. You come over here, make the big money, and leave. Then you got your, your U.S. college players, your, your Freddie Couples, your Phil Mickelson. These guys, you know, they're the grinders and the hard-nosed shot makers. The guys with imagination, with wives and kids and family. These guys are the bedrock of the game. Can I be open and honest about my feelings? I think golf's a game for douchebags. Well, you, sir, are a fucking moron. You guys are jerks. Afghanistan. Okay, now stay with me on this one, folks. Take every troop out of Afghanistan. That's right. They're gonna solve their own problems. Hi, I'm Tara. I'm filling in for Alan. Oh, hi. 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 Um, Alan told me that you liked an Americano with two shots and steamed 1% milk, so... May I? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, that's just great. That's great. really gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic. You pull out, yeah. and you say, but the place will become home for the terrorists. And I say, let them have it. But if one bomb goes off on this side of the pond, just one, We've got an enemy in his own country, and one big target to hit. Hold on to your hats, folks, because this is where it gets interesting. Take out Afghanistan. Take out the country of Afghanistan with a single thermonuclear strike, and it's bye-bye terrorists. Oh, God. It's clean. We don't have to get our hair must, and it lets the rest of the world know who's boss again. So, do I like this idea? <laughs> What's not to like? But you gotta be ready for Armageddon. But if Armageddon is what it takes to preserve our freedom and the sanctity of the Christian Bible, Armageddon is what it will be. I just... I just saw him out there, and he seemed so nice. You know, he said good morning, and... He talked about Tiger Woods, but he is pretty crazy. Did he, did he mention uh, how Tiger Woods was doing in the Masters? Oh, I don't... I'm not sure. Um, oh. is there anything else you want with your coffee? Um, uh, no, 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 that's fine. This is fantastic. This okay. is really great. Very really nice of you. Uh, I am right out there, so yeah, if there's uh, anything at all that you want, I am... I'm all yours. She's all yours? Her words, not mine. Hand on the shoulder? On the shoulder. You didn't imagine this? Didn't imagine it. You sure? I'm sure. You sure you sure? I'm sure I'm sure. Because men like you who imagine all women want to sleep with them can imagine these things. I'm not a man like that. I didn't imagine that she had her hand on my shoulder. And when she said she was happily married, was this unsolicited? Unsolicited. This is trouble. Cheese. I am going to open a cheese salon. A cheese salon? A cheese store. But it's not just going to be a regular cheese store. It's going to have class. Very French. A salon de cheese. Why cheese? Because interesting people know about cheese. Knowing your cheese is very French. Have you ever been to France? What does France have to do with it? Well, you know, French, France, you know, French, France. Oh, my God. Of course. French, France. That is one of those crazy connections I've never made until now. Is this? Yes. It's
It's one of those things I've always missed, like I was on the phone or something every time it came up. French France, you were on the phone. You know what I mean. You know, like when Prince Charles died, I wasn't aware of it until like five years later. He's not dead. He's not dead? No. Oh. No. Who's dead? Who am I thinking of? You know, maybe we should uh, get back to the cheese. So who's going to finance the cheese salon? His name's Victor. He's a client. He's a Russian businessman slash gangster, and he's loaded. Try this. Do you know what that is? Nope. That's a breathe the mole, which is French for something. Good? Yeah, I'm good. But you got to tell the difference between cheese. That's the trick. Yeah. OK? Yeah. Try this. Can you tell the difference? Yeah. Tastes like cheese whiz. Very good. You can tell the difference. Cheese whiz. Well, that's the trick to cheese. I mean, I really want to do this. Oh, and the cheese is right beside another French store. So from a marketing standpoint, it's kind of a French area. And people are going to think, oh, you want French stuff? You come down here, and we got the cheese. What do you think? This one is the site of your new cheese salon. Yes. And the lease is signed? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the story you told me about next door? Yeah, the French place, fromage. You didn't tell me that. Um, fromage is a French word. I know. <laughs> and do you know what it means in French? No. Fromage means cheese. What? I've never known you to drink hard booze at lunch. I'm coping. Okay, I'm coping. Mm -hmm. I'm coping, 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 coping. What's that? Why so nosy? Yeah. The booze, the this, pills, okay? I got them from Virginia for stress, okay? My drugs, my drugs. She comes with her own medication? That's the kind of woman I need. How's the sex machine? Becky? Becky. They fired her from the publishing house for being what they called a dark cloud. Really? Yeah. How many people get fired for dark cloudedness? Mm. But you still have on staff. Yeah. I happen to be the object of perverse sexual predilections. Well, now you're a predilection. I'm a predilection. I guess that's something. So, um, since she's out of work, I thought maybe she could work with Jimbo down at the cheese shop. Cheese salon. Cheese salon, whatever. Since Becky knows everything in the world, which I'm sure includes cheese, and she speaks every language in the world, which I'm guessing includes French. Becky and Toy. You never know. That sounds like a very bad idea. All our ideas are bad ideas. This is true. I can have another one later. With the pills? Pills with the pills? What are you, my mother? It's so nosy all of a sudden. You know, I mean, just pay attention to your own substance abuse like that. Oh, yeah. Killing your digestive system. Well, you spend time at Oxford. That's right. How long? A year. Is Oxford a pen or a jail? I can't remember. It's a university. Really? So you're a college girl? I have a classical education. Well, that's great, because cheese is a very French thing, and it's also classical. Has anyone ever told you how dumb you are? Never directly, no. But I pick up certain vibes from some people, and certain animals, too, sometimes. I get a weird vibe from cats. Have you ever ridden a horse? Yes. I rode a horse once, and it bucked me off. I felt like it had something against me. Sir, I have your outside meetings for the week that Alan left for me. Would you like me to go over them with you now? OK. Ready, sir? Should I sit down? You're not wearing uh, any. Excuse me? Clothes. I don't understand. You are not wearing any clothes. Yes, I am. 
<laughs> no, you're not. Yes, I am. Okay. 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 Um, why don't you just run over this meeting list and we can talk later? Okay, would you like anything else? Like what? Would you like a coffee? Would you like to sleep with me? Excuse me? Would you like a coffee? No, 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 no. After the coffee. Thing. I mean, what did you say after the coffee then? After the coffee. Yes. Nothing. You said, would I like to sleep with? Yeah, maybe I should come back later. Okay. Hi, sir. She's not wearing anything. Under her skirt? No. Sir, do you have a second? The corporate psychologist that was in this week, she'd like to talk to you about Elliot. She thinks that he's, you know. Uh, Elliot what? What, what, what? He's a, he's a little crazy, you know, just okay. unstable, okay. sir. Fine, fine. Okay, thank you, sir. Sorry. I was just getting a coffee. Well, thanks for coming in, because I wanted to talk to you about Mr. Mooch. OK. I think Mr. Mooch, Elliot, is capable of going postal. You mean uh, you're coming in here with a gun and shooting everybody? Yes, I, I don't have any hard evidence. So I would advise against you firing him, but I felt that it was my responsibility to warn you. Um. <clears throat> You know what you're wearing. I mean, do you, you do know what you're wearing. What I'm wearing? I mean, what you're not wearing. Not wearing? Why? No reason. No reason. Well, I don't like to wear a white medical coat, if that's what you mean. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I meant. So, Elliot, so, uh, so he's a danger? He's, like, crazy? Uh, he's... Yeah, I think so. So, that's about it. Um, other than... Would you like to sleep with me? What? There's nothing else. Except, would you like to sleep with me? Yeah. Uh, can I think about that? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Please do. Well, I'll think about I'll think about that. I'll think about it. I'm definitely hallucinating, okay? This job is driving me insane. The stress of it is that, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I have to see somebody. I have to see somebody. See somebody? I gotta see another shrink, okay? Preferably an ugly male. Why? Why? Uh, because, uh, you know, every good-looking woman I run into is half nude and wants to sleep with me. See someone for that? Are you crazy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look, I am. it's the old story. Guy says to his friend, my brother thinks he's a chicken. The friend says, why don't you send him to a shrink? The guy says, because we need the eggs. Give me your sickness. I'll take the eggs. Okay, I know that joke, okay? Can we change the subject? Yes. So the shrink saw Elliot, okay? Now, Elliot's a fucking nut, okay? And, and uh, you know, she thinks that he could go postal. Now, this, 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 is, this is, you know, shrink-patient privilege, so you cannot tell a soul. Right? Of course not. tell a soul. Elliot? Postal. Not a soul. Lips are sealed. What exactly does postal mean? Postal? Yeah. Basically means he could walk in here any day with some innocuous package, pull out a submachine gun, and just start what? blazing, shooting everybody in the office. Shooting people? With a gun. Elliot? Yeah. He doesn't really seem like that kind of person. They never do. What should we do? Seeing as you and I could die any day right now, I think we should have the kinkiest sex we can imagine. Stop looking at me. If he does go postal, and maybe two or three people are killed, that puts us on the fucking map. I can work with that. That's a huge numbers boost. I thought I was a heartless fucking sociopath. You make me look like the Pope in a condom. It's done. Becky's in. The cheese salon? Yeah, her and Jimbo are like two peas in a pot. Really? 
Yeah, yeah, well, one P and one satanic man-eating sex machine in a pod. Oh, also, I, uh, I googled diazepam. Hallucinations are a side effect, especially with booze. Yeah. So did you take them all with alcohol? I take everything with alcohol. I even take alcohol with alcohol. Well, then, then the rest is up to you. I mean, it's either a delusional life where uh, nude women want to sleep with you or uh, <laughs> reality. They're yours. You think you can handle reality? Yep. You're a brave man, my friend. Thank you. Okay. Morning. Morning. He's got a postal. He's got a gun. He's got a fucking. He's got a fucking gun in that bag. He's got a fucking gun in that bag. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, uh, I decided to take up golf. Uh, Yo, they are. They are golf clubs. Oh shit! Shit, Elliot. Golf's a tough fucking game. Let me know if you need uh, any help with that. This is just like public school. Yeah. Sir, can I see you for a minute? Now? I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a little busy. This won't take long. Well, I'm right in the middle of something. Just one minute. Fine, fine. You don't care about me, do you? Care? I, I... You don't even know that I exist, do you? Exist? Well, I... You have no idea what I have been through since I got here, do you? I, 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 I... How I feel about you? You know what? Um, I have malaria. I did a big story in Africa this year, and, 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 I, and I got malaria, and, and I get these attacks, mm -hmm. and I left the medication in the car. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I really have to run, okay? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say cheese! That's the cheese salon. That's me and Becky. And Victor, my financier, and George, who gives me moral support. Okie doke. Got a few things to go through here, but uh, first, how was your week? Oh, um, it's good. 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 Hmm.